If you asked me five years ago if I'd ever be attempting to drive around the world in a two-wheel drive, 18-year-old camper van, I'd probably have called you crazy. Yet here we are, waking up in a garage in Tijuana, Mexico. Over the past year, our van Trudy has taken us on the most epic adventures in North America. She's driven over a whopping 25,000 miles and has been to places that she probably shouldn't have. We are entering Alaska! And so, as a result, we've been giving her a little bit of TLC to get her ready for the next leg of the adventure. And in under three weeks, she's off to Japan. Do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Ralph Waldo Emerson This morning, we woke up to an email from the shipping agent. They said we need to post them Trudy's original documents to enable them to get us cleared to leave with US Customs. As full-time travellers, there are two rules that we try to stick to. Number one, never give up your passport. Number two, never give up your original vehicle owner's documents. Because without either of them, we just can't travel. So we gave the agent a call. Because obviously I, I don't have and never have had original documents. Everything's done online and I keep the original owner's document, my passport, my driving license, and I use that to go and pick up the vehicle. But I'm, yeah, pick, yeah. Could you check with your um, supervisor though? Because obviously I'm crossing borders currently. I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm, in about 10 days, I'm crossing over Mexico and they want to see the original owner's document as I go into the US. Otherwise I could be bringing a fake vehicle. So I can't, I, I'm just confused because I've never ever had to do that. So if you could check, that would be brilliant. Okay. So after speaking to They've come back and they said, I called US Customs and Border Protection in Long Beach. She said, you absolutely cannot clear customs yourself. You must send originals directly to our office and have us submit the paperwork for you. So they want the original paperwork for Trudy. We need that to get into Japan. Well, we need to get out of Mexico back into the US. So how do we how do we get the paperwork back? So she's explained that I have to give you the original, which is okay. Um, but I've obviously got to get through the border of Mexico and then I can send it to you. Um, what happens to the paperwork then? I'm terrified that, how do I get my paperwork back? So they send it back to you once it's cleared and then you've got to find us and try and send it to us. On the road. On the road. So uh, how long does it take? Because obviously we're going to be spending 10 days in Turkey, then we're going to be spending two weeks in the UK, and then we're flying to Japan. We asked the agent if it was possible for customs to send it directly to our UK address, but they said no. It had to go back to their offices in Texas, and they would then send it on. We finally have some sunshine here in Tijuana. We have a can of spray paint, so we're gonna try and give Gr Trudy's Grill a new look. Okay, we have masking taped it up. Chris is now, uh, now releasing his inner graffiti artist. Oh, that looks really good. It's all sprayed. It's the last reveal. Get the Fiat logo back. Absolutely amazing. It's come up pretty good. It looks spectacular. It's a million times better. So we just had an email from the shipping agent asking us to call Long Beach Customs and Border Patrol office because they've got concerns that it's a temporary import and it may not go to Japan. I have no idea what that even means. We've never been asked to call Customs and Border Control before and we were naturally worried that there may be an issue that we weren't aware of. It was already 2 p.m. on a Friday afternoon, so we decided to call immediately. So Marianne's trying attempt number six. <laughs> Look at that. This is the most complicated process I've ever had to ship. Oh, but bearing in mind, we are actually, uh, we're less than three weeks away from shipping. So this, 
it is just it's a bit stressful it's very stressful yeah i've been trying to be on i'll be brutally honest with you i've tried every single option and it keeps clicking to uh, an answer machine or no answer at all you're actually the first person that answered the phone the problem i have is i'm on a uk number and i'm using a internet-based um skype um app to call because i can't receive calls um so i was hoping to get anybody who that might be able to put me through to another human being uh, preferably officer uh, to avoid me having another 14 calls. The extension number I need is 2505, but there's nobody answered um, this afternoon and um, I'm supposed to talk to them today. 2505 is probably the um, cleaning cupboard services. <laughs> and they're all out cleaning. It's the out of hours number. Answer machine. No way. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And that's how the rest of the afternoon continued. We kept calling until 5 p.m., but unfortunately, nobody answered. We knew that we wouldn't be able to find out more until Monday morning, and that the question of why Border Control wanted to talk to us directly will be on our minds for the whole weekend. How many people does it take to get Trudy into a garage we are trying to fit her under the smallest gap. That we're talking about letting the, the air out of the tires, they're hanging off the back of the uh, bumper. It is hilarious. We're trying to get Trudy into this safe space for the weekend um, so that we can do some work, finish off doing all the jobs on Trudy. But the door is literally. And I just want to show you how close this is for the awning. We're not going to get into the garage. Look how close that is. <laughs> We're going to let some air out the tyres. <laughs> what are you doing to our van, Ricardo? <laughs> that was not even half a centimetre clearance, can I just say. Marianne's knob update. The gear stick knob's fallen off again. So we're going to uh, try and go and buy some more epoxy resin and give it another bash. What do you reckon, Rocco? <laughs> Good morning. It's not every day you wake up in a garage in Tijuana, but that's where we are today. And uh, being in garages, on this adventure has definitely become a little bit of a habit and a necessity but it's bright and early here this morning and uh, Ricardo is an absolute legend and today he's going to be doing a few more bits on uh, Trudy to get her ready for the next leg of the adventure but we feel very lucky to have met such cool people. I'm doing some posts on Polar Steps and I can hear you outside talking about Ricardo and I'm actually mirroring it in the post. Are you? How lucky are we? On the road, you have to get maintenance. Some of you ask MOT, how do you get an MOT? Well, we can't. The reality on the road is we can't, but we can go to mechanics and say, can you make sure we're safe? Can you check our brakes? Can you check if there's any work, any knockings or rattles we get done? Ricardo, you're a legend. This morning, that's the first job to call Homeland Security because in the email I got this morning, it says that, you know, otherwise our van may not clear customs to leave. I don't know what it is, but we always seem to have problems leaving a country rather than getting in. Good morning, officer. How can I help you? Good morning, officer. My name is Marianne Fisher, um, and I've been asked to give you a call by from. Um, I'm not really sure. She told me to call you uh, because you had some concerns about us shipping our UK registered vehicle from LA to uh, Yokohama. Oh, is this the case of do you, uh, the original title documents don't want to be surrendered to Trans Global? Oh, absolutely. But it, we didn't say we cut, we won't tran uh, we won't surrender them. It's we're in Mexico and we're going across the border on Wednesday, so we can't surrender them. Um, until we've crossed the border. 
Um, and then. Why is the title in Mexico? If you don't mind me asking. Because we're in Mexico with the vehicle. Oh. Because we're we're English and we have an English van and we're driving around the world. Um, so we're currently in Mexico. We're driving over the border. By the way, we've had a fabulous time here. Um, and then we're going to, we love, we've literally fallen in love with Baja so far. So uh, we're, we're currently continuing our around the world trip um, and we're shipping from Long Beach to Yokohama. Um, and so yes, we we will post the documents. Absolutely not a, not a worry, but obviously we need to bring our vehicle across the border. Uh, we're actually driving um, very close to Los Angeles. So if you want, we can deliver them to in an envelope and just drop them off and leave them with you if that speeds things up, because obviously we've only got two and a half weeks till we're planning to ship. Um, if that would be okay, we can... No, you need to just give them to because they're the ones who are submitting the documents into our federal system. They're okay. the ones who are authorized, and then they submit them to us. Oh, okay. We don't do, no counter, we don't do counter service. Oh, okay. We don't do none of that. They have to be submitted along with the packet in a federal record number that is obtained that they submit on your behalf. And okay. They submit to us. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, when is when is the export date for your vehicle? Do you happen to know that date? She's going to be dropped off around the thirteenth of March, okay. and we're looking at shipping around the sixteenth of March to 16th, 17th or 18th. We haven't confirmed the date, uh, but they've said that we can drop her off about the 13th. Okay, just keep in mind that um, per federal regulation, it needs 72 hours, not including weekends or holidays. Okay, now let me make something clear to you. When you cross the border, please make sure to go to the customs office there the U.S. Customs Office in Mexico and make proper entry into your vehicle oh or your vehicle God. or else you will not be allowed to export that vehicle with a foreign title. Uh, we came, we shipped into Charleston. Uh, made entry in Charleston, do you have an entry document? L well, I, I, I assume so. I was given all the paperwork by the shipping company. The proper entry document. Question though, when we came from Canada back into the U.S., they would have checked that we had that, wouldn't they? So the documents that we produced there not necessarily because some people when people cross the border um just you know as pedestrian um crossing uh um, land border they, assume they could be just yeah it's land border they assume you're coming for the day now if you tell them that you're making you're not you're going to be here traveling then they'll, they'll issue you that document so it's your responsibility so if you don't have that document there's going to be a hold up with okay vehicle. so just make sure when you call her back at ask her if they have that entry document for you they know what it is okay um, and then if you have it then you're good to go oh thank you so much officer you've been an absolute uh, star of information thank you i'll get on that straight away and yes we've never said we won't give it up we've said that we have a border crossing to do so we couldn't give it up okay thank okay, you ma'am no problem thank you very much you've been okay, a star a thank day. you you too lovely bye 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 we only have the paperwork that we've been given because they're the professionals so, that tell us what we need. Yeah. So when we came into Charleston, we're not sure whether we have the correct documents. So well, I've got the shipping agent's phone number. I can always ring her and say, can you send me that document? Because I don't know what that is. So these are... I love how the fact they say it's our responsibility, but nobody, we, nobody actually knows you, the rules anyway. Well, you, you pay someone to guide you on getting the shipping process done. So you only know what you're told, don't you? So I'm not an expert in I was going to say, we went, collected it from the officials. Yeah. We showed all the paperwork. Yeah. And then that was it. Okay, we have it. We have a document from the Department of Homeland Security for entry. So we're good. Phew. Not that we didn't know that we were true professionals and we had this. Organised chaos so. this end, that is for sure. What's the plan of action today then, Ricardo? Well, break a few mini bolts and try to change the, the belts. Yeah, because you said they're looking a bit cracked. Yeah. No more now. Especially with the water. Oh, yeah. You have your no splash shield. Oh, yeah. We're going to build one of those. Build a splash shield yeah. and we're also going to, we've got a few new brackets for the radiator. Oh yeah, that too. Because okay. they're a bit, yeah. they're a bit dodgy. Yeah, but missing. she's looking clean. She's looking loved. <laughs> we also need to screw your knob on today. We do. I'm just doing polar steps. Do you know we've done over 50,000 
646 miles on this around the world trip so far. While Ricardo got to work on Trudy, I thought how lucky were we to find such a fantastic mechanic who isn't afraid of working on a vehicle which they don't have in North America. Rather than just watching, we decided to give Trudy's wheels a makeover. Radiator holder there. We've had a couple of problems. So Ricardo has changed these and replaced them for new ones. So now it's firmly solid. We've also got a crack here on this air in, in pipe. So we're going to get that changed too. It's a busy garage. Things are happening. Okay, we're also doing the electrics. If you saw our previous episode when we were on the beach, we had a bit of a fire in Trudy. Was there actually flames? There was flames. So Ricardo, the man, is uh, <laughs> re-looking at our... How's it looking? Is it dodgy? Yeah, it'll be dodgy. If it burns, don't call me. <laughs> so yeah, we got two leisure batteries down here. The fuse did actually go uh, when the fire happened. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna put a new USB socket and a new 12 volt socket there. We're also getting the headlights buffed up, giving it a new lease of life. We might have a problem. So we glued, we glued the gear stick on and now it won't go into reverse. So I think the epoxy resin's dripped down. I think I put too much in. So it's we're going to have to try and cut this off somehow today. I don't know what we're going to do. We'll talk to the specialist. Ricardo knows what he's doing. He's the genius in the group. We're just doing what we think we're doing and we did it wrong. Okay, so we got some breakfast this morning. Virie, which what? is apparently a traditional Mexican... It's like a beef stew that they have for breakfast. Is it spicy? No. Served with tortillas and okay. it comes with like onions, coriander, salsa, radishes, lime. Well, it's a nice start to the day. It was one of Ricardo's customers that came in that's like, I bought you breakfast. I love Mexican hospitality. The friendship here has been incredible. And it's perfect timing because we've emptied most of the food in the van because we're crossing the border. And there you go. Look at those. Those are real. Oh, they smell. Fresh corn tortillas. Oh. And they're, Ooh, they're yeah. in meat juices by the looks of it. Yep. They smell very corny and meaty. So we got the, the meat on the tortilla, a little bit of coriander, a little bit of these red onions. These are super, super spicy. Are they the ones that anaesthetize your mouth? Yes. A little bit of onion. A squirt of lime. A little dribble of hot sauce. Cool. And then you pick that up. And that is the perfect Mexican garage breakfast. That's really good combination. How's the heat? It's good. It's literally like a rich beef stew. Okay, Ricardo, my knob is off. <laughs> I think we, did we put too much on? Did I put too much on? Yeah. We overloaded it. We complete, oh my goodness. Yeah, I might have gone a little bit heavy handed. And that spring is attached. Yeah, this is, no, this this is, is why we need help, Ricardo. Yeah, I thought you can do it by yourself. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ricardo actually said something very uh, thought provoking to me. It's like, how the hell are you guys actually managing to do this journey? <laughs> Okay, we're doing attempt number three on the knob. Ricardo's turn. Why is it so complicated? Because <laughs> there's not much to stick with. There's not much play. Okay, well, that's it. That's Why do it. You make it look so easy. But is it going to stay on? <laughs> We know that the next couple of weeks are going to be really challenging as we start the crazy, stressful process to try and ship Trudy and our belongings to Japan. But we never expected things to turn out quite as stressful as they were. And it just didn't go as we'd planned. <laughs> 